the season at Opera Theater of St. Louis always has something new or something rare or sometimes both. This year's rarity is a little different. It's by one of opera's most beloved composers, Giuseppe Verdi. If his adaptation of Macbeth is not among his top ten, that doesn't mean it won't be a welcome discovery for music lovers for whom the opera is new, especially in opera theater's excellent production. It gives us some of the best sounding Verdi we've heard in St. Louis thanks to the cast, the chorus under Robert Ainsley, and the St. Louis Symphony Orchestra under Stephen Lord. This was Lord's first appearance since announcing that this season will be his last as Opera Theater's music director. The opening night's audience demonstrated its affection and admiration for the conductor with thunderous applause before each act as well as during the curtain call. Lord draws performances from the musicians that are wonderfully responsive to the opera's story, emotions, and themes. These are all less complex in the opera than they are in Shakespeare, but the same can be said of Verdi's two other operas based on Shakespeare, Otello and Falstaff. In these two late masterpieces, some of the simplifications arguably result in artistic gains. If I miss the psychic exploration of intoxicating ambition in Shakespeare's Macbeth, I do appreciate the power Verdi brings to the groups portrayed by the chorus, the people of Scotland and the witches, which are represented by groupings of three women rather than simply three women. For both groups, the chorus produces marvelous sound and intense climaxes. The shrewdness of Lee Blakely's stage direction is evident right from the start when the witches do not phase the stalwart warriors Macbeth and Banquo until they hear the prophecy that Macbeth will be king and that Banquo will be the father of kings. The opening scene introduces a striking image, bundles of twigs in a circle around a corpse. The twigs become a recurring motif and because they are immediately connected with the witches, we can't miss the magical implications each time the twigs reappear, as in Macbeth's final encounter with the witches and in the march to the climactic battle. Both Macbeth and his lady have low voices, which fit the chilling music in their solos and duets. Roland Wood in the title role and Julie Makaroff as Lady Macbeth bring powerful instruments and compelling stage presence to their performances. Robert Pomakoff as Banquo, Matthew Plank as Macduff and Evan Leroy Johnson as Malcolm bring strength of voice and character to their portrayals of the opera's admirable characters. The right atmosphere for the supernatural tale of betrayal and revenge is created through the combined efforts of set designer Alex Eels, costume designer Mark Bowman, lighting designer Christopher Ackerland, and wig and makeup designer Tom Watson. Choreographer Sean Curran and fight choreographer Sean Sheely provide the movement required to make the production convincing, and very convincing it is. Yeah, a fascinating one. Let's hear some of the music from it. Hey, thanks for watching. Click here to subscribe and check us out on Facebook. The link is below.